welcome to the show, everybody. This is a happy hour episode. It's been a long week for all four of us, and so the conversation takes some twists and some turns throughout the episode. Uh, there's still some nuggets in here, so some key things to take away. How you plan for the next year. Uh, we talk a little bit about commission structures and how to balance that versus base for salespeople, um, and a lot more. So if you know someone else in sales, please share this with them. Um, if you're enjoying the show, please leave a comment or subscribe on YouTube. And if you're not sure where you are on the DISC scale, send us an email, assessments at salesthrowdown.com, and we will get you the assessment. You can take it and figure out where you are. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. In the D corner, we have Clint the Cleaver Bigelow. In the I corner, we have Al the Gambler Daniel. In the S corner, we have Nan the Promoter Foreman. In the C corner, we have John Small Mountain Hill. Let's get ready to throw down. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, today, we are talking about the next year, right? We're kind of wrapping up. 2019 about to enter in 2020 and if you are planning your year in january you're already behind the behind the curve <laughs> well, <laughs> sounds like we're the department stores we already got christmas out there and, and hey. even halloween hasn't hit yet <laughs> but i but i like the way you're thinking you know you got to be ahead of the game right pulling back the curtain a little bit we do record these a little bit out of out of out of order so you know, but no, you're gonna hear this in a couple of weeks but but I, it's a good topic yeah i mean if you're not getting ready for next year now you're late man it's crazy i thought we agreed on this topic before we turned the mics <laughs> on <laughs> no, I I mean, we did we did go man go you're, awesome. you're good so planning right forecasting setting goals all of this stuff and if you're waiting until january like i said you're already kind of behind and since most people have got some cyclical nature to their business meaning that they're slower the net and al not so much because you guys go crazy from pretty much like Halloween on. Right, right, right. Uh, but Clint, with his new role, I'm really curious to see how, you know how he's going to be doing some goal setting. I've got some goals for myself and everything else like that. So let's talk a little bit about Nanette and Al first because when you guys, I mean, November, December is crazy. I mean, when I worked with you, it was you party all night because there's all these Christmas parties, all these holiday parties, and then you show up super early the next day. I mean, it's, yeah, er yeah. it's early normally anyway because mm -hmm. these doctors like to cut early because they want to get a bunch of stuff in. Sure. So no normally it's like a 5, 5 a.m. show up time. But around the holidays, it's like 3 anyway. So when do you guys plan? How much time do you spend doing that? All that stuff. Well, um, in healthcare, because it's deductibles and out-of-pockets being that, and you know the money that most people are going to spend, a lot of big-ticket items usually come at the end of the year because people don't want to spend that money again to prep for the next year, you know, bringing it that up to speed. So we burn the candle at both ends, and it's assholes and elbows. I mean, there's not much planning because we're on other people's schedule. I don't know what that means. You don't need to explain, but <laughs> <laughs> for me, that just means, you know, you just, it's fun. You don't care. You're When you're in it, you're just loving it. So it's. No, I and if I gave the wrong impression, it it, it is. It's our money time. Mm -hmm. It is where we're we are gonna make probably the same amount of money as we ma have made for the the prior so year. 50, for, so fifty percent of your year is in the last two months. Oh, absolutely, it is. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, I that's mean, so maybe not fifty, but it's it's forty percent of our year. I love how you talk about big ticket purchases like it's some kind of Black Friday sale. I can get <laughs> in healthcare. It is. I can get the sixty-five inch TV, <laughs> or or I can get this disc pulled out. Well, <laughs> well, the patient has met the deductible, so exactly. that you know it's not. Like <laughs> so the cash cow is ripe. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sorry to put it that way, guys, but in a business sense, people stall. I mean, you know, you deal with pain, you deal with discomfort. And and I hopefully other industries experience a little bit of this where it's on your budget, you you you've got the expenditures or money's left over. So I, I'd say look at the end of the year is who's closing out that wants to spend some money that that still has a little bit of a budget left. 
So, I mean, and I think I, I see a few head nods here. Yeah. So I, I'd say, you, you know, you, you wrap that into what you're currently doing and know where you are in the, that cycle, like you said, mm -hmm. whatever that may be for you. Because yeah. in the last quarter and you, you maybe the first quarter you're thinking, I'm, you know, I'm going to save and I'll be careful with my money. But by the end of the, you either know you have no money left or you have an abundance. You're like, oh, I don't go. Let's, let's do something I need to do. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of businesses also, being a business owner, you speak from the tax implication, right? Whatever's sure. sitting on your balance sheet, unless you have accrued costs and some other, you know, whiz bang accounting kind of methods, you know, particularly at the medium business range or guys that are, you know, I mean, I would say even up to about twenty million, they're going to be sitting with some cash on their balance sheet sometimes, yeah. and they want to use that effectively so that they get the tax, you know, they get the you use it against what they've made this year, yeah. knowing that January January first, you hit a new cycle. So you're 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 stalling, you're spending, but then you recoup it almost immediately in January. Mm -hmm. Just getting it off your books one month versus the other. So yeah, keep that in mind, guys, when you're out there selling. So does that mean that you guys wait until January to kind of sit down and figure out like, okay, here's the goal for this year? I mean, how granular do you get with I mean, Matt, who's on your team, and the other people on your team about, and to be very, very honest, you've got a lot of different irons in the fire and stuff. So how granular do you get around your goal setting? Exactly, um, yeah. I, what happens is everybody's worn out at the end of the year. I mean, <laughs> everybody. I mean, yeah. from the frontline guys at a portal of entry right on up to, you know, the spine and neurosurgeons that we deal with. So knowing that, we usually take a little bit of a breather, but we have – Medicare isn't on the same cycle as most private insurances, so we, we stage and, and we have this foldover that goes into January for people that aren't meeting high deductibles, which are usually your federal programs. So at the end, it gets so tight with hospital space and, and being able to see patients that we push that out. So then we have another month of – you know, it's pretty steady through February – it's really looking at the middle of February going into March where we begin to shake the weeds or figure out the, due to our downtime where we, who we need to be in front of, who we, who we saw being very busy and very active, and they're sort of the king of the hill at, at, the, you know, at the February meetings, right? So you're kind of like sleuthing? During oh, absolutely. Okay. Who, who, who's rocking and rolling? Who, who's crushing it? Who's, you know, who's wiping out their reps because you know, they're so busy? Who are you seeing? And we work with some busy guys. That's, you know, you're just there all the time. Oh, yeah. So yeah, but 75% of the people that are listening to this probably aren't in the medical field. Yeah, so you're wondering, you're right. you know, why why the dissertation? Why are we going on and on? Well, it's just an example of you need to know your goal. You need to know your, you know, make a plan. Now with Clint, what, probably the end of the year, do you want to kind of talk about Yeah, do you goal? guys slow down? Are you guys super busy? That's the exact opposite of everything you guys just said. <laughs> well, exactly. That, that's my business my is the same every, one. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm in the just wrong different. damn business. Mm -hmm. That's well. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about, you know, a lot of your money uh, in the industry is in these last few months. You know, people have some money to spend or deductibles are, are gone, so they're able to Cafeteria spend it. Right. plans, the whole nine yards. Yeah, so for us in construction, it's uh, it's the opposite. Most people are out of budget in October, and they don't know how the hell they're going to get through November, December. Gotcha. Just maintaining their own facilities, let alone putting new money into projects, mm -hmm. right? And also the holiday stuff too. So a lot of my, you know, we've talked about this a lot. My, uh, my lead times on my projects are six, seven months, sometimes a year. Yeah. So what happens, and I'm already seeing it right now, is, well, let's just go ahead and get that budget put together for January. You know, when we all get back from the holidays and we all settle back in. So people already have the mindset in early October that we're not going to push more into this project until mm -hmm. we – but we need the budget today so we can go ask for money in January, but we're not going to do it this year. I mean, that's really hard, right? So I put, I'm putting effort into stuff that that's great. It's going to happen on the backlog side. Backlog, that's right. Okay. However, I got to burn revenue to keep payroll going this year. Yeah. And, and I got guys, you know, in construction, that's the hard, this is the hard part about uh, balancing sales versus construction, the actual build outs, right? Is that I've got a whole bunch of guys in the field building all the stuff that you're selling 
And if you don't keep them fed and keep them busy, they go somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to figure out how to balance that scale of keeping those guys busy, even in the slow, the slowest of the slow. So, you know, truly, I like to think of my year as a nine and a half to 10 month year. Okay. And I kind of plan that way. And everything that falls in November, December is fantastic. It's bonus, right? Yeah. And I just can't, it's all, it's really hard to forecast November, December, January. Because once again, the January's back into that. All right, we're all back in from the holidays. We're all back in on vacation. Let's sit down. And now you're not closing the job till maybe February, March, right? Because right. you're talking about it in January. So that's that's a that's a tough thing for me. And right now we're we're going through all of this uh, financial data. What, what kind of markets are we looking to you know branch out into, or do we want to keep chasing the same stuff, or you know the opportunities that we had in. 2019 and 18 are they still there in 2020 are we going to have to make that up mm -hmm. but bring our listeners up to speed for those that are just joining us clint just assumed a new position out of, out of hampton which we commend him for making the effort to get here to do these things so bring us so is that different than what you were doing in the past um it's just a different responsibility right so before it was a dedicated sales role for business development in the in a similar industry um, now it's the um, the vice president job of pre construction. So you got say that again, guys. Title dropping. Man, you're <laughs> painting that man his penises like well, drop down. <laughs> well, the difference is now. It. The difference is now is that you know not only do you have to make sure that that sales is rocking and rolling and, mm -hmm. and you're maintaining that, but you're also um, you're keeping the field happy and, and going on the construction side. So. It's a it's a it's a very different role, but um, so far so good. So yeah. you got to load everything up in that in that first ten months, and then just kind of coast on on the backlog. Yeah, that's that's the so. As a matter of fact, we were just going through this uh, this morning, and uh, right now we're we're not trying to bring anything new in. Like I said, if it does, it's a bonus. But we're burning backlog to get us through the revenue side mm -hmm. and payroll side of the rest of the year. If anything comes in and burns, and by burn I mean you've thought it, you've sold it, you are actually doing it, and you're getting paid on that. That's mm -hmm. what I mean by burn, right? So if you're burning it right in the next few months, it's a it's a bonus. Okay, interesting. Nice. My my uh, my year's a lot like Clint's, right? I mean, first no one gets out of bed and is thinking, you know what, I need to hire someone to come in and overhaul our CRM. Like, because they're putting the Christmas ornaments exactly, up, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, honey, we gave me some tinsel, hmm. yeah, exactly. So, hmm. no one is planning to work with me at all, right? And so, then when I'm trying to, you know, network and call and have conversations at the last part of the year, oh, yeah, you know, that can wait, that can wait, that can wait. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, I've already started doing that. You I have really want to wait till I've, well, not in surgery and other medical stuff that is you yeah frontline you know, stuff man oh, yeah. we just yeah. really we're so you know, slammed right now programs where why don't we yeah. wait until the first of the year I'm like oh. yeah no. so yeah they do tend to sh you know we we do get some some of our projects shelved it's just crazy how that's such a marker for everything but I mean it is so well I mean you work your ass off and then it's holiday season and then parties and Thanksgiving I mean it's birth of Christ I mean, it's crazy yeah. Yeah. that too play yeah. the role um. So the hard part about that, though, is I think that most people kind of figure out a goal. They say, okay, cool, I'm going to do, for the sake of just really easy math, you know, I'm going to do, you know, 100K this year in sales, right? And so that's 10K in January, 10K in February, 10K in March. And they don't really do any kind of appreciation around for, like, good months versus bad months. And because, it, because they're not really tracking anything, and that's going to be a whole other episode eventually. But, you know, they're just kind of, oh, this is where I should be for this month. But if you're, you know, collecting that data and looking at it, then you can really get pretty granular. Because one time, Clint and I were talking about it, and uh, he was showing me, okay, cool, we're going to do, like, three or four here, but only two here, right? Because what, what like, you and I were talking about how you were kind of setting your goals and planning, and you were getting really granular, which was super impressive, because that's not normal for a D around getting into the details around – Here's what we can expect in March oh, versus yeah. April and February, right? The two months on the other side were slower. Correct, yeah. And, and I kind of do a, you know, uh, in in the construction world, you would 
when we have like a man, it's called a man powered curve, right? And you guys could, if you had, if you had a big staff, right, you would have to, you want to try to keep that as a smooth of a curve if you can picture a graph as possible. You don't want big peaks and valleys, right? Same in our sales, right? We want a nice steady curve so we can Absolutely. forecast, mm -hmm. forecast, project, um, and and with with those jobs and that that all comes from past data. And I think where I think where it's really neat for me to go back into what you're talking about, where it's not natural as a D to do that, is... It's also not natural for a D to say neat. I've never heard you say neat. <laughs> <laughs> like neat? Yeah. I've never done He's that. He's been in the car for like four hours. Yeah. <laughs> I used up all my cuss words at the, in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I've, I'm figuring out that I don't necessarily have to go... I, I was scared of data because I was scared that I have to go do the data. I have to go make all the mm -hmm. data what i found out is that if you start asking people uh, like especially your accountant side your managers your project managers your you know individual leaders in their in their groups they have all that data because they have to have it in order yeah. to do their job right so it's not for me it's not necessarily creating it all it's gathering it all and then mm -hmm. organizing it into into what i need yep and yep. that that to me is super it, it is it is uh it's the best way i know how to forecast those those downsides of the sales side. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, there's so much tech out there now that tracking is not nearly the labor intensive thing that it was once upon a time. Sure. Right. I mean, with if even said, even if it's in Excel, exactly. It's right. Great. But Fine. I mean, I mean, I mean, invoicing software is pretty great. CRMs are pretty great. You know, I mean, so you can track all this stuff fairly easily. But what happens is that a lot of salespeople don't want to be tracked. Right. Well, yeah. Okay. No, but nobody then, does. All right, but stop well, for one second. Well, if you're, I'm sorry. If you're, <laughs> no, <laughs> meaning, oh no, I, I have a point here. Okay, yeah, you, you, do, you don't want to, you want to get your bank statement from January to December, lay it out on a table, just your personal bank statement, mm -hmm. what you made, fuck what you spent, and look at your income. That's and then a, you decide. That's a motivator for sure. Yeah, you decide. If you see a slump, motivation. I understand the money thing, but if you see a slump, if you're looking at performance, yeah. then look at your commission check. No, and if no, you're not I, on commission. That's a problem in and of itself, right? Oh, I disagree. Wait, what? Well, I'm not against. There are certain levels yeah. where, but if you're not getting a slice of the pie, if there's not a bonus attached, I'm not talking about a base. If you're not highly motivated by the grease you get off the top of being successful, then, you know, you may be wasting your talent where you're at. Do you so remember that you said bonus? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe every day so is a bonus at my office. So hold on a second, though. So let's back up and talk a little bit more about that because this was not the intended topic, but I think that this is really interesting because I don't get motivated by money at all, right? So if you were to sat me down or to sit me down and, and we looked through all my bank statements and how much money I made and stuff like that, that's not going to make me go out and work harder. Right. Okay. So, but it'll, it, but it may show you the cycle that you're on, either sure. personally no, or professionally. Meaning, I fucked off during the summer months because it was nice <laughs> and warm, and nobody was watching my back. And so I walked and I, I drank a bunch of wine. I sat on a bunch of patios, mm -hmm. went to cool places, but I didn't make much money. I'm just saying, for me, I look at that, mm -hmm. and I that's a real barometer for. But how, how hard I've been working. To what you're road. saying, I, I can totally relate, and maybe that's the BS, but I remember my boss um, early on in my life. She's a bunch of dumb men. No, now. not – no, it wasn't. It <laughs> wasn't oh. Al. It wasn't one of my other bosses. Um, He used to call me and go, you are not going to believe what you're making this month. And I, said, and I didn't want to know the dollar amount. I wanted to know – Wait and I never do that? <laughs> 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 that's a no, but go ahead. You just get your check. You should be working that hard. But what I'm saying is I wanted to know not that I did well because of the amount that I was going to mm -hmm. put in my checking account. I wanted to know who did, who, you know, who, who fulfilled their commitment to me. Yeah. You know, that was like really big to me. You know, I was successful where? That's what I wanted to know. Well, I, I think one thing that's super important to think about is that normally the money-motivated people rise to the top. Right, because they are so money motivated, they're they're motivated by winning. You know, Clint, uh, he talks about winning on a on a fairly regular basis. But hold on, hold on. The so then you get into the dangerous realm of just assuming that everybody's motivated by money, right? So you can be a sales manager and be like, hey, you don't want to make more money, and if that person's not motivated by money, you're you're speaking on deaf ears. Now, 
a minute ago, Clint had kind of something to say around kind of being, it, sa- it sounded like you're being anti-commission. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about that. I want to hear about that. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how. And it, maybe my, that's just personally. Hopefully my sales mm-hmm. team doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, careful, careful. No. Uh, I, I will tell you that as a salesperson, what I see and I saw in myself is that when I'm starving and things aren't going the right way for me in the sales cycle or I'm new, right? I come into a new company and start with a new customer base, new marketing, whatever. I'm starving. And for some personalities, I would think that, you know, sitting here on this panel, it's a huge motivator for Doc to like, you're putting all the faith in me to go earn, earn, earn. I'll do that. But he's cut from that cloth, right? And we can go back to him being a parking valet. <laughs> right? Oh, go fuck yourself. I was sorry. In charge a parking valet. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Small nuance, but sorry. nonetheless. Sorry. I was like, and I was like, have, you, you, ever, yeah. have uh, you ever said parking valet? <laughs> yeah. What do, you, what do you call it? What is Bellman. going on? The Bellman. Bellman. Yeah, Bellman. that's what it was. I was searching for that. I just go. remember the story about you flipping <laughs> a coin or the flipping the coin. But anyway, the point of it is, is that, you know, that's to Doc, that's a motivator to go earn some extra scratch. You know, mm-hmm. like he can, he can wheel and deal and he can, he can earn his keep that day. Yeah. For a lot of people, it's a stressor. And it's a huge stress, right? And then what I <laughs> grow what, a pair, man. Well, maybe, but in, I will tell you this: in in the construction side, the hungry, starving salesperson brings in shit jobs. Mm. And then oh, what that happens, happens across the board? Sure, I would. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, w- I would yeah, think you so. Can't be desperate. So no. now we're already in a slump, and now you bring me bad work. Now you're bringing me <laughs> bad work, and then my performance in the field. Now we got a bad reputation in the field. Mm-hmm. It all it, it compounds really quickly. Yeah. Well, they that. just need a lean to, like some <laughs> yeah. two by fours. Yeah. I think we could go to Lowe's and we could get this figured out. Yeah, well, they, well, they spend less time qualifying. They spend less time doing all the things that they need to do to make their slump go away, mm-hmm. because they need to they need to survive. Absolutely. And so I see that in construction. I I, I saw that in myself in the very beginning, and and what what triggered the. You know, the other side of it for me was really digging into the qualification steps and saying, okay, I'm working really hard at trying to chase 50 jobs right now. What if I focused on three or four that are really qualified and I know they're going to win and I put all my effort into those three or four? That's how I got myself out of that slump. Mm -hmm. But I'm very task driven. Yeah. So that works for me. It wasn't about money. It was about I got to get some wins in the win column because all I see is red and I'm failing and I don't do well with failure. Yeah. And for some people, winning is money. It kind of goes hand in hand, really. Like if you're winning say, jobs and every- you're winning sales, you're getting paid. Okay. So yeah. what I'm saying is, like, are, do you look at money as the win, or do you look at win to get the money? Oh, potato, sure. potato. I think that you're still looking at the success to to motivate you. Well, I think uh, I think there's something you said about like how you frame your frame your success, right? Which is kind of what you're saying, like whether whether you sell a deal and you make the money and that's okay, or you're just looking at the money and then that that is your own version of success and that's okay. But going back to the thing we were talking about a moment ago, um, you know, there is that point to where that 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 hunger is unhealthy, right? And then when you combine that with the fact that most people don't walk into a job on the first day knowing what a really good fit looks like, so they just start trying to bring in anybody who can fog a mirror and has a wallet and that becomes its own set of problems and everything else. So, um, yeah, I, I like the, uh, I'm a big fan of handing it back on the performance side at the end of the year, sharing that wealth. Okay. So if you're bringing me good qualified jobs and the reason that we're doing so well, actually doing the projects and the mm-hmm. construction to be specific is because you brought in some really badass jobs, right? You brought in, they got good margins on them. They're, you know, you had a good customer to deal with. You vetted all that stuff out so that it was a successful matchup for our company. You brought that in. I'll pay you all year long a good salary to not make you starve to do that. And then if we all are successful at the end of the year, there should be a big fat chunk of money in there to divvy out. That's my goal versus trying to make it win every month for everybody. So I have a question. So. Do your people know what percentage of that big fat chunk of money they yeah, get? It's uh, built into what you know their their known contract. Yeah, so I mean, you got to set expectations around that kind of stuff. Well, I think, right? so so here, yeah, you do. So for example, if I sell a two million dollar job at a certain margin, most 
commission based in the construction world are on a scale, right? You sell it at 20% margin, you get this commission. You sell it at 18%, you get this or less, right? It goes down the scale. And then there gets to a point where we're covering cost and you don't get paid anything for bringing that job. What I don't like about the the big commission push in, in this world is that, well, I'm starving, so I'm going to drop all the margin out of it because I got to sell it, mm-hmm. right? So you drop all the profitability out of it for the company, gaining revenue and paying payroll. But that's a good way of doing that, though, right? Like you get your commission based upon the margin you sell it at. So not not but, like a not like a widget based commission sale. But, like you make but, fifty dollars per deal. Or yeah, but check this out. You're taking the the win out of the company and you're putting the win in the person, just his own personal bank account. So instead of him making a really good, let's say, $6,000 bonus on that job because he really vetted, he put his time in, he wasn't stressed about money, now he's at selling it at the lowest level, and he's making 600 bucks because the dude needs 600 bucks no, that yeah, month, exactly, yeah. right? But that doesn't do anything for the big picture of the company to grow, to forecast, to do all this stuff. I mean, everything we're talking about is really based on what those salespeople are bringing into you, right? You can't do any of the other stuff without that. Well, yeah, you know, and I think we talked about this on another episode, but I mean, that stigma of the sales guy sells anything to close the deal and then it's left to the back office to like figure it the hell out later on. And then everyone hates the sales guys because they're bringing in bad deals. Yeah. How do you, uh, but if you're not making the same amount of money at at 15% margin versus 20% margin, doesn't that keep that from happening at on some level? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the money's got to be there in the job to pay your, I mean, because it all scales out, right? Sure, so, absolutely. I mean, if you're not selling the job at the big percentages, then I can't give you a big lump sum of money of because course, it's yeah. just not there, right? You cut it all out. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to let you sell a huge job and then pay you like it's the lowest job either. So, that's why I like that scale, right? That no, I, I love that. But, right? but, you know, I have a feeling that. Everybody out there listening is going to be taking this episode into their boss and be like, "You need to listen to this episode." <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. it though. <laughs> but, uh, there you that go. doesn't work. That. Do it. Yeah. You so, might not get what you want, but do it. So, in your opinion, yeah. if I'm hearing you correctly, you get a larger base to yeah. kind of to kind of cover your bills and everything else like this, and then at the end of the year, you get kind of a profit sharing yeah. bonus if you're successful and the company's winning. I I like that model. Yes. So. Let's talk about that a little bit because a lot of people believe that if you don't pay people commission, then they're not going to work as salespeople. Yeah. And I've seen – That's right, a really stupid thing in I my agree. Book. It is stupid. Well, okay, and we're Nate, all sales okay, people, which Hold is on. funny because yeah. – well, you you. Let's just put you on salary. That I will agree to. It's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, it's got to be healthy, right? Yeah. Right. In order and for the theory to work, it's got to be healthy – so that the guy's not starving. Yeah, it's going to get him out of that. But he's not going to have a big win. So, you know, what's the average age of a salesperson out there? You know, probably in the mid-30s to 40s. I don't 60. In B2B? Like yeah. 60? You think it's higher than that? Uh, I don't. <laughs> wait, what, what was your low end? Like 35, 40. I would say it's it's probably even a little bit lower than that. Okay. Right. So, so now you're talking about a bunch of young starting out families yeah. that are probably neither one of them have great big paying jobs. And you're popping out kids, and you want to buy the new house. Well, I hate to car. say the cliche of you get what you pay for. You know, I mean, it really is. Absolutely. In most cases. Well, see, that's the thing, though, is like if you uh, fire that sales guy, let's go find another one. Fire exactly. that sales guy, yeah. let's yeah. go find another one. That's your right. mentality, because. That's but that's also usually the same people that are wanting to pay 100 percent commissions to people. Oh, of course they are. It's the same people. Oh, well, no, but that's. I'm not saying those are some churn and burn industries, I get right? It. But. They're in my industry but all day I, long. I, I know can, they're in your guys' okay, oh, yeah. But I can tell you there are guys in healthcare, right, that sales, you know, medical sales, that they get lazy at 250 right? Sure. I mean, because they're, they're out there crushing it, and it's all straight commission. Mm-hmm. And there's oh, a certain it. liberation into your schedule sure. when you can work for a very large company and tell them to go f themselves. Yeah. Replace me if you think you can. Yeah, yeah I and man, love that. Man. A, that's that superstar. Welcome to the pinnacle. I mean, Mount Everest of of f and sales. I love whenever Al's more of a D than an I. Yeah, <laughs> it's a 
today's one of those days. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I love it. Funky liquor right? that our producer over there like <laughs> fed me earlier. God, we did try yeah. a little bit of man. Uh, that stuff's like got me called? all warm we, inside. We we didn't. Y'all did. Yeah, yeah. Clint yeah. abstained I like a smart adult. I oh, did. oh, I you didn't have any inner. So it was just mm. me and Paul. And oh Alan. man, that was good stuff. What was it called? Good old absinthe. Absinthe. Good old absinthe. Thank you, Tim P. Tim P. I adulted really well today. Yeah. Man, it was terrible. It was like the worst black licorice ever. So, okay, so going back to that, though, right? I've worked with a ton of teams, right? A ton of small organizations to where inherently there's less trust for the salespeople, right? Oh, yeah, the developers are great. You know, these other people are great, but the salespeople, i got to keep a close eye on them. So we're going to make sure that they're getting. I don't really understand why. I think that the only reason why that happens is because they're only measuring the lag. They're not measuring any of the leading indicators at all. And so they're just looking at what have you done for me lately? Yeah. Well, the other You're side saying of- that's the office staff? Well, I'm saying that, that that's what the owner is typically oh, saying. Okay. Right? So gotcha. they're just looking at – So the guy's sitting in the office. Exactly right. Well, the, so, <laughs> so the funny thing is, is and, and I say this a lot in, in, the, in the construction companies that I've worked for, is we're a construction company first. We're not an accounting firm that does construction. We're not a HR company that does construction. We're construction that has an HR company. Mm-hmm. And so if you started a company with one person, let's say in construction, you started with yourself and a weld machine and a truck, and you went out there and you just said, you know what, I'm going to go do this for myself and I'm going to get it. Mm-hmm. What's the first thing you had to do? Sell. Sell a job. Yeah. yeah. Correct? Yeah. I mean, all, how many companies have to you, – if you don't have sales – Yep. And you had to sell a – Then you have nothing. And you had to sell a profitable job. And you had to sell a job that you could perform. Yep. You had to do that, right? But the funny thing is, is I think it gets lost as you build a corporation. You get to that $30, 40 well, million dollar mark. You get the bean mark. counters in there that are That's, saying, but this is in this. Hey, and this, we're paying yeah, this guy. Uh, we're paying this guy one hundred and fifty grand. What's he doing for us? Well, he's fronting the entire company. That's when I look back work. and I say, and they're paying you for what? Well, that's exactly right. So that's Come where... Come on, bitch. Let's, that, go, let's go to the mat. <laughs> so that's why I say that, is that we're not an accounting firm that does yeah. construction. Yeah, I like you. So, well, you put that. And so that's where I, I just go back to, it begins with sales, right? Nobody, you know, everybody in the field would be like, well, you couldn't, have, you couldn't have done it without me in the field. True. But you wouldn't have had anything to do if you didn't yeah, sell exactly. it. Right. So here's a little note to everybody out there that's working really hard, selling a lot. When they want your paperwork turned in, okay, they want it. But you don't have to give it to them. You're fucking ready to give it to them. Make them sweat. End of month, make them sweat. Send it the day of. Boom. Give them a letter of reg- resignation. That's my paperwork. <laughs> no, I, I don't say that. I'm saying, you know, you got to get accountability and stuff like yeah, that. You're, you're out there grinding the streets, and you got some, you know, five phone calls, end of month, end of month, end of month, get your POs, get your POs. I'm like, they're coming at 5 o'clock on the last day. I don't know what you guys are going to do with them, but I know my date stamp says they got delivered. <laughs> Anyway, Notorious for it. Notorious for it. Do it. Do it. It'll make you a legend. Well, the fun, you know, <laughs> It'll make you a legend. for all the wrong reasons, <laughs> but do it. No, the interesting thing is that you, you, you start with the sales person and they sell a bunch of stuff and you start having success and then well, you put those guys on the back burner, right? You forget where that comes from. And, and now all of a sudden you're looking at the accountant comes to you and says, our overhead's getting high oh. and we're paying we're paying these sales guys, yeah. you know, collectively. Let's, let's limit the commissions. I know so many people that, yep. and I've and never understood this. It's never made any sense to me, but they say, well, once you make a certain amount of money, we're going to decelerate you, yep. or, or we're yep. going to start paying Are you. Are they yep. crazy? I don't get it. I don't understand. But A guy you, like me? If you, if you think oh, that the fuck. only way if you think that the only way that salespeople are going to go out and work is if you pay them commission and pay them for the work that they bring in, and then you're going to limit, like, those two things don't make sense in the same world. In my opinion, so I got a I got a funny uh, a little story about that. A, a coworker of mine a couple of years ago had the best story in the in this little realm. Uh, he they were talking about what happened was one of the C level guys said those guys those sales guys will never make more than I make, and we heard about it. We heard him say that. It was just like you know just demotivated. Like screw that guy, screw this whole company. I'm not working for these guys. I'm definitely not going to sell good ones. Yeah. So that's my reaction. The other guy's a super eye. So he likes to go have fun with this. You know, he goes in there and he says, hey, 
Uh, I, I got a scenario. I want you to hear me out. I have a, a friend of mine. He's got a huge job. We're going to sell this thing at like 30%. It's a $10 million job. Um, all he's asking for is like 20 grand. Would you just write him a check for 20 grand and he'll hand this whole job off to us in a C, C level guy's head? Oh, yeah, that's a no brainer. He said, So why would you only pay me eight on that? <laughs> and it was just like, yep. but, but right, you're willing to cut his check to a perfect stranger that you don't even know because you're hungry, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't give it to your own sales guy because you forgot where you came from. Well, there's a guy that we all know, and uh, he is working in a packaging and distributing, right? That to kind of keep things. Leonidas. Sure, exactly. And uh, I'm lost. It's what he looks. Right. It's what he looks like. <laughs> there was a. Uh, there was a. There's multiple owners, and one of the owners who doesn't have anything to do with the salespeople or anything else, just back office, he manages kind of the, the warehouse. Uh, he's like, you know what? We don't even need these salespeople. Let's just get rid of all of them. I'll handle all these bids. I'll just tell them how much it costs. This money will come in. Now, right. our friend has got a $4 million book of business, right? He's, he's doing $4 million of business through this company. And this one guy who has just – he's just so out of touch with what the salespeople are doing. He just thinks, you know what? We can just fire all these guys, and this is going to be totally fine. How do you get anywhere close to that level of, I guess, success, maybe? Is that the right word? Well, you forgot what the process is, right? With those salespeople out there creating relationships and getting people to ask you to bid those jobs, yep. right? So then you get busy bidding. It's like, these are coming in every day. What do I need to pay those guys for? But you cut those people off your staff, and in the three or four months or three weeks, you're not getting those bids anymore. Exactly. So the relationship. you you don't yeah. know. I mean, literally over the I don't know, 15 years, I think 12 to 15 years, and even before that in healthcare with some of the other vendors because I was in frontline care. I had sales reps call me and say, "Hey, I think I'm about to be let go," and I'm like, "What are you worried about?" And they're like, "Well, you know," I'm like, "You own the business." The bitches you work for haven't met one of your clients. <laughs> your client wouldn't like answer the phone. I said, you take your shit, put it in a bag, and walk next door. And if you need help, call me because I know a bunch of people who want you. So at the end of the day, it's either your business or it's not because it's not the company's business. Not in my world. So I want to back up a little bit to something that we've been talking about because – you know, you were talking about the fact of, you know, ca kind of getting a fixed salary and then getting a, a portion of the profit at the end of it, you know, kind yeah. of a profit sharing. I thing. mean, if you want to incentivize people to do to get paid on doing more sure. than what they're already yeah, paid to do, that's the way I would like to do it. Right. When the company is super profitable and they're making some extra scratch on the mm -hmm. back end, let's divvy that out where it belongs. Right. I agree with that. Now, knowing yeah. that. Does everybody get the same cut? No, no, they don't. No, it's about the role and what they do. There's a scale. There's okay. there's levels, right? Interesting. Level one through four. Funny how when you become a VP, oh, this, come this on. kind of shit starts coming out of your mouth. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Just, just had to just throw that. Look, and he's wiping his face. Yeah. Right? Back on his heels. Individual Jesus. producer to manager. Jesus. <laughs> but, okay. Square that for me, Chief. Well, I will tell you that I had the same thought six months ago. Just really? nobody listened to me about how these yeah. things should happen i've always you know when i first started with the the previous company i walked in and i said i want 120 grand a year i don't want to i don't want your stupid bonus structure i don't want your commissions i want 120 grand a year because that's what my family needs to live that's that's my number i don't care to make any more of that i'm trying to get three kids through school and plan and project and do all the things that we're talking about that you do for the forecast i'm trying to do that in my own checking account right right and i need that number to do and live comfortably sure. right so that's that's what I needed, and I just asked for that, and I heard the the dying words of, "I would never pay a sales guy that." Okay, well you need to check it. You need to check out our bonus structure because our commissions will get you to three, four, five hundred grand a year. That sounds like multi level marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. MLL, I said, my I God, said, okay. we're all like flying jets. So you know, nothing right, against that. Right then and there, you know, I just ran some scenarios with the scale, and I said, okay, so. You know, we're a, about a hundred million dollar company. I can, you know, literally in my group, I can only sell about twenty because that's what my group's going to do next year. About next year, million. So you're yeah. a quarter. You're you're a fifth. Well, of this, the yeah, old old company. Yeah, I was. So and they only want to give you one twenty. No, yeah, but hear me out. So it was like, 
I could only sell enough for my group anyway. I couldn't sell for the other group, and mm-hmm. so twenty five million at the highest scale only gets me like sixty grand a year on the commission side. So your little you could make whatever you want. You can make five six hundred thousand. Yeah, okay, the I company's gonna the company's gonna have to be a seven hundred million dollar company for me to do uh, that. Yeah, agree. And I'm not Thank saying I'm not here. The math. I'm not saying I'm not here to help you do that because that's exactly why I'm here yeah. to get you to the seven hundred million. But we're not there today. We can reevaluate this every year if you want. But this year, this is what I need. And this doesn't make me hungry. This makes me motivated to come to work and kill it for you. Mm-hmm. That's me as a high D. That's what I need, right? Yeah. Everything's back home is taken care of. Yeah. That shit's locked Agreed. down tight. My family's taken care of. Now I come to work and I'll kill it for you. Mm-hmm. I don't care what the hours are. I don't care what I'm doing. That's me personally, right? And when that first first month, right, I got zero sales, I got zero customers, and I make a shit salary. Now I'm now I'm angry, pissed. My whole family's starving. I mean, that's not a situation I ever want to be in again. Right. No, for sure. And we, but the thing is, is industry standard for salespeople is to put them all in that right off the bat. Yeah, I know. It kills me. Well, okay. That's, that's so, what I'm talking. So about. So th- that brings up an important, you know, topic here is look at your contracts, guys, and do the math. I need like to get a Clint, coffee tomorrow. Like Clint said to to see whether this is you know you know smoke and mirrors on on the on on the bonus or the commission side yeah. and and evaluate the size of your company because it makes a big deal particularly given the fact that if you're very you know you're 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 good at what you do highly motivated but you go to a small company that can't support your superstardom right so it's a, it's a trade off there i mean you go into certain companies that you know have a ton of potential, a ton of growth. They line it out for you. They need to live up to their side of the agreement too, particularly if you're a superstar. Now, if you're finding every reason to dislike anything we say, we're not talking to you, so yeah. cut us <laughs> off. That's, that's true. We're, that's we're, true. We're, we're talking to people that are like us that want the most for what we do and want to be fair about that, and it is a negotiation. If you are a superstar, you can write your own ticket, so write it. I mean, it's, it's – yeah, that's per- perfectly said in my book. And I, as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, you, you get big enough where you have to hire an in-house accountant. That guy doesn't come cheap. You know why? Because he manages finances. He manages your book of yeah. money, right? When you need a check written, he's going to tell you you either have it or you don't, and here it is. The funny thing is, is where does the money come from? And it comes from the front-end sales guy. Mm-hmm. How low you may think of that guy on the totem pole, yeah. that guy. The necessary evil. He is, and yeah, very. So. It's funny to me that love being the necessary. Oh, evil. me too. I mean, I live in that realm every day. I love that side of that side of it. But I still say everyone's in sales. It's just you know, how that's much true. You just don't know it. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, so uh, I was working with a team the other day, and uh, this guy has four people on a sales team. One guy kills it. He he outsells everyone else combined, and so we're talking. And uh, he's got them very locked down. He's got he's very old school, traditional, you know. Um, and I said, okay, you know, what are you trying to do? And uh, he's like, well, I, I really am a little bit nervous that I'm going to lose the top performer. I said, okay, y- you should be, right? Because if you're good in sales, that gets around, right? I mean, you can lie on a resume and you can you can tell whatever stories you want in the interview room, but you know, success kind of proliferates itself right you know it, it speaks for itself so this guy was like well and i said you know have you thought about giving him more leash have you thought about doing these things to kind of you know change the culture a little bit because that's kind of what i'm there to do and he was like oh i don't want to do any of that i was like hey this guy is going to leave eventually right if you keep them locked down if you're not trusting them if you're not you know doing things the right way and it's always like what have you done for me lately that guy's going to leave and then all the other guys are going to leave Right, because your best salesperson is someone else's best potential hire, right? Especially in the sales role, because most people are going to go. You know, if you're killing it, they're going to give you a longer leash. You don't have to come in. Oh yeah, you, you just keep killing it. Don't worry about it. You know, and and that's on the traditional side. Right. So then what happens is you got the people that are doing well, and they get all this leash, and then the people that are new or struggling or something, and they're they're on a much tighter leash, and that you know presents its own pro- own set of right. problems. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what happens when the guy, when your lead sales guy, let's just say, in his in his sixties, right? He's on his last five years. Yeah. Right. How do you how do you forecast that? What happens if he retires earlier? He decides, 
you know what, I'm done with this. I've made enough scratch over the years because I've been killing it. Mm-hmm. I'm out. And now you're left with, let's say, three or four on your sales team that are super weak compared to that guy killing it all the time for you. For So for what I'm talking about, that incentivize at the end, that higher salary, in my book, that's a perfect guy to do that for, right? Hey, look, you're at the end of your career. I don't want to see you go anywhere, but I need you to spend the next five years getting that portfolio of my young guys built up so that in 2020, let's say, if you decide to leave, they make up your book of business the way that we know works. You're the successful model. We need to train them. And your your day, you're going to kill it. You've been in this business for 20, 30 years out there killing it every year. Your years are going to repeat itself, right? Mm-hmm. You're not having those struggling years anymore because you have a client base. Those people are going to call you to get this job done. They trust you. Those are going to come in. You're not working as hard as you were as, as those young guys are, right? Yeah. So, But they need that knowledge. And if you leave me, I'm stuck with this. And they so, have no knowledge. So I just look at it from a business owner's perspective. Why would you not cultivate that guy into the best exit strategy he's ever seen? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's I was exactly just, what I'm saying. And, and, and so, but I know that you know those guys are usually sometimes easy pickings, particularly in, in yeah. our business, because they don't get any extra love, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. they're like, I'm about to close out. And they can take that whole book of business. That's why I say, guys, own your book of business, and then you write your own ticket. And and somebody else courts them, sits them on the sideline for a year. It's their non-compete just to take that business. Puts a big fatty in their pocket. They they work their relationships over to it. Why not just keep that in-house with a young stud who, you know, or studette, you know, that's ready to assume the throne? that he's leaving you as a legacy, and then, damn it, every year, invite him to the Christmas party. Literally had a guy, um, this is probably six or seven months ago, and he had kind of a long timer, you know, on the team, and I said, hey, you know, have you thought about what happens whenever this person leaves? You know, because they were mid-50s. And I said, uh, you know, what are you going to do? And he says, well, I'm not worried about it. I said, how are you not worried about it? Genuinely curious, and he's like, He's making too much money. He's not going to leave. He's going to die, though. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? yeah, there's but a finality here. That goes back to the point that I was talking about a moment ago, that if you think that everyone is motivated the same way you are, right, oh, because you're, you're motivated cool. by money. Exactly, right? So he, this guy was literally telling me that his top performer was never going to leave because the money was too good. Whereas the top performer, whenever I'm talking with him, trying to figure out like, hey, what are you doing that's like so good so that way we can, you know, kind of spread that love amongst everybody else. He's like, man, two more years and I'm done. <laughs> yeah, <You know>? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you go back to the owner and sort of convey that message without you know, blowing the other well, guy Yeah, up? exactly, right? Because I, I know I you're an honest guy. Yeah. You don't want to like screw one guy over. Yeah, I'm not here to betray anybody's confidences, right? And normally when I'm working with a team, I try to sit with the person who is killing it. Right? Mm-hmm. Who do you? Who on your team is doing the best job? Because I, I want to go sit with them, figure out what they're doing that maybe the other people aren't, and then try to figure out those those nuggets. And so because of that, I gotta kind of play both sides because I can't front the other guy out of like, hey, this dude's leaving in two years. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> Unmin- hey, yeah, you need to get your shit straight because yeah. this guy's out the door. And so I was just really like, hey, are you sure? You know, how much is it? How much is he making? You know, and he tells me the number, and I said, okay. You know, how long has he been making that, that kind of money? And he's like, oh, man, probably good 10, 10 or 15 years. And he's like, that dude can retire whenever he wants yeah. as long as his spending is in, is, yeah. you know, someone in check. And the guy He's guy got a get coke it. habit. He'll be here forever. <laughs> guy, guy didn't get it. And, the, and, and this is close to a year ago, so uh, this guy's probably in his home stretch, assuming that he hasn't Ouch. changed his mind. That's good. <laughs> like, somebody's going to shit the bed, and it won't be the sales guy. Note to everybody out there: not the sales <laughs> guy; it's the owner bit. You know that that's a that's a pretty big thing, right? But part of that comes down to planning and just being aware and being thoughtful. That you know, I mean, and we all do that, right? I'm not motivated the same way that Clint is, and I, I'm definitely not motivated as evidenced by this conversation the same way that Al is, right? I'm way more motivated by loss than I am by by gain. Well, let's let's put it this way, right? You take a uh, let's take one of your office staff that's not in sales, like for me. Let's take a, a project manager mm-hmm. and you say, okay, here's a 12-month million-dollar job I need you to go run. This is all you do for the next 12 months is run this, but I'm not going to pay you until you close that job out and see how well you did. 
what you don't think about it like that with him. Okay, it's the only you, realm. It's you the need only a, realm that gets treated. Because you need it. You need him to perform for the twelve months, right? Okay, maybe I I misspoke. In healthcare, a lot of times in healthcare sales or you know device, whatever it may be, you get a base until you leave that base to jump to commission, right? So you get your starter starter kit, mm-hmm. but eventually it becomes how much influence, how much can you gather, and it does belong to you. Yeah. I mean, most companies incentivize with a draw. Yeah. I hate that word. So well, much. I hate draw, too. You I know, get but the salary. I'm not pulling it back. Yeah. It doesn't come yeah. out of your future commission. I mean, I, I agree it's just, with it takes you a while to learn the position and be able to sell. I mean, let's be frank here. I, I think that it takes a 12-month cycle to really get your feet oh, rocking and rolling. And any agree. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh. To, it takes to at come least in with, six. To come in with no customers. Feet. No, Now, killers will go out there and they'll kill it for you because they're natural killers, right? But somebody that's got to work a process, never been in sales before. And mm-hmm. some of those guys do really well, and they're good assets because they're not jumping job to job, right? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, yeah, they're they're happy with their home. So uh, you you know, s- superstars. There, you know, there's some, hurt you. okay. There's okay. some one offs that I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the I think the the fifty one two percent of people that jump into I think sales it's higher than that. It probably is. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. I was being pretty reserved on that, but you know, jumping right into sales, you're let's just say you're 23. You have no life experience, job experience. You got nothing, and but now you're a salesperson because we see it out there oh, every yeah. day, right? Mm-hmm. Banking industry, right? Oh, we see it. Oh, oh. It's like, here, throw these young cats tell, out there. Right? I, I can tell you my story about yeah. banking if you want to hear it. Yeah. I mean, it's so the thing is, it's like, uh, you know, you put them on this draw and you put them on these, you know, incentivized plans. You know, Doc, I don't, I don't mind what you're doing because you're taking care of your people until they can take care of themselves. I get that. That's that's taking care of your people, and that's what I, in all reality, what I'm what I'm saying is, re, you need to take care of the people that take care of you, right? And however that works for them and motivates them. And look, you might have two people that do the same thing and make the same money for you that are incentivized completely different. And they're motivated yeah. completely different. And you might have two pay structures for them. That's your agreement with them, right? But I think to throw out a blanket, uh, I'm going to give you 40 grand a year so, and then you got to kill it. But, That's crazy. Uh, okay, I'll flip this thing. I can tell you about a multinational multi-billion dollar company that didn't want to lose me at one time and was willing to let me write my own ticket, but it didn't make any sense, and so I said no. So, guys, I'm out there to tell you they will bend the fucking rules to keep you on board if you are a superstar. If you're not, don't ask because they won't give. But if you are, it's okay to go ahead and... Checks and balances and standards and rules in my world. I think, I mean, in my own head world, mm-hmm. as a high D is, they're uh, they're just guidelines. Agreed. So they're set in place for people to follow until till you have to deviate. Till you have to deviate. So, you're in a VP role now, right? You've got some salespeople on your team. Let's say that there's some turnover, and yep. you decide to bring on a new salesperson. Yep. Are you okay with the idea of like, hey, you're not going to make any money, or you're not going to bring in any business, any revenue for the business for 12 months? Is that is that how you plan for that? I mean, that's how I would plan for it. Really? Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Because well, first of all, I'm not going to go hire a brand new sales guy ever. Ever. That. Well, I got to have a killer in the industry, so I'm probably going to go shop out some people and find that killer in the industry, so and then, I'm going to pay him high to get him okay. over there. Okay. And I'm going to get my book of business built. Right. Because I was going to say, if you're going to try to poach a top performer from someone else, that's what I'm gonna do. You got to pay the premium. That's what I'm saying. Right. You d- you don't yep. get good. No, I'm, yeah. I'm good. You with that. You don't get good talent for cheap. I'm good with that because so. I'm filling a hole. Right. Guys, you hear that? He's got some budget. Just figure out where he's the <laughs> VP and send your resume <laughs> to salesthrowdown.com. It'd almost be on his shirt. It'd, it'd be a it'd be a damn good better okay. be a damn good resume. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but I don't need you know I don't I mean I have somebody's out there though guys don't give up. Yeah, get Clint up. <laughs> He's hiring. So okay, so Al, you were you were shape nodding your head as well, and we worked together, and I think I worked for you for eighteen months, something like that. So, yeah. Something like that. So yeah. now, if you're if you're gonna hire someone tomorrow, would you still just kind of assume that they're? It's six months, bare okay. minimum. I mean, probably a year, and then we start. You know, I have my checks and balances. You know, if if I'm not getting phone calls, I know things have gone silent. It's kind of tough on you, but I, you know, it. it, 
you know, I have my old saying, you know, I don't fire people. People fire themselves, you know. They yeah. just decide this isn't for them. That's it. And then Matt, do you, do you concur with Al about that it's six months minimum if you're new? If you're new, absolutely. Okay. Interesting. Well, we don't have any experience. You don't know where to go, what and now, to do. Having said that, we, that. we're going to show you everything. Everything's yeah. out there for your, you to take. It's just, I mean, guys, sales is not easy. You know, I mean, there's a rhythm to, to, to your process and the company's process, and those all have to match up, and you, you do have to find a fit. So. so how much do you think of sales in your world? Okay, how much of that do you think is art versus – talking to me. How, yeah, yeah, sorry, Al. Uh, how much of that do you think is art versus how much of that is science? Like, like what do you think that – is it 60-40? Oh, I think 30? sales is all art. There's very little science there. Really? Because you're playing on people's I, wants and need, needs. I think I can flip that completely. I agree with Clint. Uh, um, you think it's all science? Well, I, I think I, it's ninety so, ten. So it's all facts. Yeah. I think oh, it's. I don't think no, people digest no, facts. On. Well, no, no, no. It's the art of like no, hold on. building. But the science is building good rapport with good people. That's part of the science, right? Oh, you're talking yeah. about the social science. Mm-hmm. I thought you were talking about just the math and the equation no, no, no. and the vomit well, you're Well, I think we all would have a little bit different opinion of what science is, but my science is <laughs> the the process, right? <laughs> The earth is flat, and then if you go too far, you fall off the edge. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay, so word it differently then. It's not science. Yeah, is it relationships, or is it facts about your product? No, let's don't word it. You said <laughs> art or science. Yeah, art or science. I'd art, say it's art. Art is art is completely open to interpretation, right, which which I think. Art, art sounds like traditional sales to me. Science sounds like process sales. Which is what I'm obviously a huge proponent of database selling. Agreed. Right? Or so da- I'll tell you. I'll, so in my in my industry, I, I'll tell you how I flipped my my own self out of being at a really low hit ratio, starving, couldn't couldn't get work to save my life, to working half as much, maybe even seventy percent less mm-hmm. every day, knowing that I'm just every month just hitting these crazy goals and then up in the goals and hitting those. And that was all science-based selling, in my opinion. I mean, it was finding good people. It, it was the science of finding the good people. So it's the process. And I think that's something we really should focus on maybe w- our next podcast. I think process is really important. Hold on. The, these guys are having a moment off. over here. Just yeah. Like, yeah. No, go ahead. I, wanna fi- I want you to finish your statement. I don't even. Too late now. Uh, <laughs> did I interrupt him? Cut him off. What were you, just what, like what were you gonna fucking what like were you gonna say, What were you gonna say to it? Did you have something? To no, I wanted to hear it. Oh, well, sucks ah, for you no, guys. Sorry. Okay. Well, uh, it's time for the throwdown. <laughs> 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 so we started out with a topic of planning, and then we kind of got kind of off topic around that. So in a good one, it was a good topic. Uh, let's talk about either planning yeah. or or I, I, can, I think I can tie it. All right, good. go ahead. Because <laughs> it, you know, so what we were talking about the last you know thirty minutes was was all a part of planning right how do you plan for you know one if you got that sales guy that's out there killing it and he's on his last few years how do you plan for that right and we talked a lot about that uh how do you plan to get your sales team motivated and put them out front and really take care of those people so that they're bringing in good quality stuff so that your revenue shoots through the roof your income side yeah. right the actual income dollars and look that's one way of, that's that's part of planning um but the big scale of planning going back to our original topic of forecasting sales to me there's no better way because you can put any plan on paper i i kind of put it to like writing a business plan right you got to put a business plan to go get a loan to start a business right and that plan has to be locked down and you have to have facts and uh, market study and you have to have all those things so the bank's going to say okay it's a proven it's a proven concept based on past data here's the money right when you're going into the next year and you're providing all those same things, right? You're, all right, we want to do $30 million instead of $20 million, or we want to do $100 million instead of $90 million. Well, you got to have something to prove the, you know, to proof in the pudding, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, that's backtracking data. That's going back and saying, okay, this is the market that we've been successful. This is how, if we could do one more job, we did nine last year in this market, if we could do 10. That would put us there because past 10 years of financial data tells us I can do that. And I also have the capacity to do it because I know what that looks like from my past data. 
I mean, it all goes back, right? And I think that the, this is the time when you're forecasting the new year, that this is the one time, if you never do it any other time throughout the year, if you don't go look at past data, this is the time you have to do it. Okay. Al, what do you got? Art versus science. <laughs> with, okay. with the alt Without the art, there is no science. Because without sales, you don't have any of the data that Clint just spoke of. Sure. There's no revenue to speak of. Somebody had an art form that they went out there and they sold something to begin the process. Now, there might have been some, some revenue put into the foundation for that process. But I, I you know, and I want to come back to this topic at another episode, yeah, art no, versus science. Awesome. Yeah. And anyway, yeah, um, I think you front with the art. And then you, like I said, you project with the science. Lynette, planning? I don't have anything to say. I, mean, I, I, I need to give more time to Clint. To Clint. <laughs> <laughs> so I nothing can't. about planning or forecasting or <laughs> motivations? I mean, we covered a lot today. I know. I was like, which topic do you want? We're going to talk yeah, about right Yeah, whatever you want. So um, it's kind of like, for me, planning is huge. I need to know exactly where I'm going weekly, daily. You know, Al will call me, what are you doing today? And I and I totally know. I think it's you have to know what you're doing. You can't just haphazardly wake up and go, well, let's see, what am I going to do? I mean, you're not going to be successful if you don't have a plan. You have to have a plan. I always <laughs> – Al went fly fishing. I always say – I think I've maybe said this before, but if you're fly fishing, you're not looking at your pole. You're not looking at the – you're looking at the fly on the end of your rod where you're going to throw that. You know, like where it's going to land. Yeah. Okay. Got to know where to go. Well, all right. So for me, um, I think that uh, Nunette's point brings a lot of uh, feel goods to my belly, right? Planning is super important, right? If you're not planning for what's going to be happening next year and kind of planning accordingly, you don't know where you are. And it's super easy as a salesperson to say, well, I close everything. Every person I sit down next to, I close. And that's just not true. Fire. Right? Exactly. So. You know, manage that, right? Use the data, as Clint talks about, right? Plan, you know, plan your days. And <clears throat> one of the things that I'm going to that I will say is, you know, figure out the lead, not not just the lag. You know, lag revenue and closed deals are a lagging indicator, but you can't control how much you can't make someone say yes. No matter who you think you are or how great you are, we're never as influential as we think we are. So, look at that past data because if it takes me 20 deals. Or 20 conversations to go close two deals. If I want to close two more deals, I need to go have 20 more conversations, right? The rule of large numbers makes sense. So plan, document, use a CRM, use some technology, and uh, plan accordingly and go get after it. Um, Sold. Yeah, good show. This is kind of yeah. kind of all over the place, but this is how our <laughs> how our normal conversations are. Yeah. So this is good. Um, if you're listening and you know anyone else in sales who might be struggling with planning or you know how to get to where they want to be, please share this with them. Um, we talk about a lot of stuff on here, and we hope you can learn from our experiences. Follow us on YouTube. Um, and if you want to take the assessment because you're not sure where you are, send us an email, assessments at salesthrowdown.com, and we'll get you taken care of. Thanks a lot.